Clothing, and we're going to look at a hat design. And give me a second to move the controls out of my way, and we're going to get going. All right, so what we're going to do is look at applying a hat hoop on the screen because it's really important that you know what your limits are before you make your design. So let's go up to our view and view preferences. In the view preferences, we're going to go over to hoop original point. In your machine hoops, if you click on the machine hoop type, there's going to be, you know, a bunch of different machines here. And, you know, we'll go ahead and we're just going to pick the Tajima Toyota um, link or the SWF. And there's our semi-wide and there's a wide cap frame. So we're just going to go with the semi-wide cap frame. And, you know, we'll pick kind of the standard size, 178 by 76. And then I want to show the hoop on my screen. Now, if I forget to put the check mark in show hoop, let me show you what you can do to show the hoop on the screen anyway. Just click OK. And if you forget to do that, then just come up to this icon. If you follow my mouse, it's right next to your insert image icon where it says hide view hoop. So there's my hat hoop. And that is the constraints of what I have to stitch in. Now, I shouldn't take the design all the way to the edges on either way, not ever on my hat hoop. I need to give myself a little bit of room. But if you guys have stitched on hats, you know that some of them have a seam in the middle. So we're going to start looking at the proper way to deal with, you know, stitching on a hat, number one. Number two, even if the hat does not have a seam down the middle, I need to use this technique to properly stitch on the hat. Remember, the hat is round. So you're going to have to, you know, flatten out and push that hat fabric in a certain way to get the best stitch out. So with that being said, we're going to talk about this. And no, this is not the new IDS software. We'll be, um, you know, we'll actually be looking at the new IDS software. Let me close that down so we don't get flashes all the time. Um, as soon as possible, but as of right now, we're still using the old IDS, and the, you know, upgrade is coming. We're just kind of waiting on a couple of things here. So here's my hat hoop. Okay, that's a frame. That's my constraint. So I'm going to go ahead and say create, and I'm going to insert my image, and I'm going to use this image right here. So, you know, it's a scanned and simple artwork. I'm going to put it in as a template, Okay. So let's put this in, and I'm not going to worry about the size right now, and just say OK. So, you know, here's really the size that I have to work with. Now, I can increase this image, right? And let me go ahead and hit the plus symbol and darken that up. OK, now this is very pixeled, and, you know, there's a lot of white background, but let's go ahead and increase this a little bit more, because we can always decrease, all right? So here's my image. Now. Basically, these four are exactly the same, so I'm only going to do the work once. The center one is a little bit different. And, you know, and then this little bar is, you know, really about the same. And I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, go ahead and see if I can increase that size and use the minus symbol so I can fade that out just for a second. All right, we'll leave it like that. All right, so now I can manually punch these, and I'm just nudging so that that's centered a little bit better, or... I can use, you know, my magic wand. So we're going to try a little bit of both here, okay? And let me see what the question is. All right, so let me zoom in. I'm going to use the zoom tool here, and I'm going to zoom in. Since these four are exactly the same, I'm going to go ahead and just make one of these and get it right once. So Let's go ahead and start with our magic wand and see if we can use this to get what we want. So I'm going to come over here to the green and I'm going to click on it. And you can see it's very pixeled, right? I'm only getting like one line, but if you look up here, my tolerance is here. See the tolerance box that pops up? And I'm going to nudge that way over to see what it gets. And you can see it's, you know, it's kind of picking up some things. Let's nudge a little bit more and a little bit more until it just gets to all the white. And then I'm going to back off. Okay, and if you don't like everything that you're picking up, you can back off a little bit and see if that improves. And you can see I've gotten a better curve here. It's not perfect, but, you know, we're just going to do this once. So let's go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to press Escape to turn off the tool. And here's what I have in 3D. 
all right? So now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit this to make it correct once. So let's go into our view outline, and I'm going to go to edit mode so I can see what's going on. All right, so for the most part, I can just move over these nodes and pull them down. And if I have some extra ones, I might want to delete that, even if I get that curve, because I can come over to this curve line and right-click my mouse on it and straighten it out. And then I can pull this down and adjust this outline as needed, right? And up in here, you know, I might uh, delete that point and pull these down and right-click and curve this line again, right? And, you know, when you get to this point, you can delete some of these points and just use that right-click and pull. Um, even all the way down to here, I can delete this as well and go ahead and pull these. Now, this should be more curved. So let's go ahead and move that down. Left-click here and just slightly move that. And then I'm going to right-click and curve this. And the rest of this is looking pretty good. Now, I'm in auto-judge, and, you know, and maybe at the bottom here, I might want to curve just a little tiny bit, not a lot, just right click and curve a little bit. And I'm in auto judge for this. So I want to change this from auto judge into a complex fill. <clears throat> so there's my complex fill and I have to be careful of the direction. So let's go ahead and just move over the wand and you know we'll kind of angle that direction a little bit like that and hit go. And you know if that doesn't look good just remember you can angle a little bit more and hit go. All right, so there's my direction. It's looking pretty good. And now I just have the circle, because remember I said we're only making this once. So I'm just going to use my circle tool. I'm going to come over here to my quick, you know, creative toolbar here, and just click on the circle tool. And I don't even have to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of drag a circle and press escape. And it's easier if I go into view outline and left click on this so I can get the outline view and I can see what's going on here. And then all I have to do is just shape this by pulling on these bounding boxes, right? Now this is also an auto judge, so right click on it and say complex fill. And let's go ahead and make it similar to the other direction and hit go. Now these are two different colors, so I want to make them exactly the same color, so I don't have to worry about this. So I'm just going to come up to my film strip here, see the stitch sequence strip, and click on the rainbow between this green piece and this, you know, blue piece. So there's my rainbow, right? So now I've got, you know, complex fills, and I've gotten one of these made, and what I need to do is just right click off to the side, and generate to allow the program to create in and out points. Now, this is very, very close, and the program has not put a trim in here because it's actually close. We go to one-to-one -one view, that's very close. But if you want a trim in between these two pieces, then come up here and put a trim. Just click on the scissors right between those two sections, and you're going to create a trim in between the two pieces, and your machine, of course, will, you know, stop lock the stitch and trim and then lock in and make the next section which is the head. All right, so getting the pieces done. Um, Barbara's asking if this is IDS or digitizing base training. It's actually IDS training and we're going through how to use IDS to make a design and sew for hats. But, you know, if you have other programs then this actually might be good digitized training as well. All right, so we have one of our people done here. You know, there's, you know, the one person, and it matches this exactly, right? This is a little bit different, but not much. So, let's come over here and just left-click. If you follow my mouse, I'm coming up to the film strip, and I'm going to left-click on the green color chip that represents these two pieces. They're both selected with flashing lines, and I'm going to come up to my toolbar, or I can press Control-C if I'm a, a keyboard person, and I'm going to copy it to the, the clipboard on the computer, and then I'm going to paste it. You can see it comes in with the bounding boxes and not the flashing lines. And there's open bounding boxes inside of this. So what I'm going to do is come down to my Align toolbar, or I can press Control-G on my keyboard, and I'm going to group these. So here is, you know, this piece, and it matches this, although it's right on top of the other piece. So what we're going to do is mirror it. And to do that very quickly, I can come up to Edit and Mirror and mirror by a line. And when I mirror by a line, all I have to do is find the center point of this design to mirror it, and it'll get that over much more quickly into the position. So by a line, 
Here's my center point. I'm going to center this as much as I can. Press and hold the left mouse button and drag a straight line as straight as I can down. Okay. And there we go. And we're pretty right on. And now I can just use the keys to nudge this into position. All right. So, you know, we've got our one guy done here. This guy's not much different. We could edit him a little bit. Um, if he's lined up well and this guy's lined up well, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, we mirrored so I know that they're lined up here right? And that's a quick way to do that. And we're not even going to worry about the direction right now. We're going to just make these pieces very quickly. And I will upload this image, by the way, to, um, you know, the file and send you guys the links out so you can download and practice with this. So here's my, you know, green guys here, right? So, you know, let's go ahead and if we left click on this guy, we get the bounding box. And if I hold my control key and I left click on this other piece below, I get the bounding boxes and the open boxes. Then I would want to just come down here and group that design. So he's grouped as well. So now when I copy and I paste, I can just kind of left click on this and drag him over. And we're going to make some minor adjustments for the second piece. So let's zoom in here. And the head's in a pretty good location. I could drag that down and be a little more precise or use the arrows on the keyboard, right? What I'm looking at is where is the body? So we're going to right click on this body, go back into our view outline, and edit mode. And remember, you know, if we delete some of these points, it's advantageous because it really does make this a little bit easier to just drag these pieces because these are a little bit different, but I just don't really want to have to punch them all over again. I'm just going to make these minor adjustments and get what I want. So let's go ahead and hit go. And, you know, that's looking pretty good. So let's go to one-on-one. -on -one. Left click on this. And, you know, if I need to, I can nudge this a little bit. I'm not going to worry if it's a little bit off, honestly. Um, that's not going to make much difference because we saw a fill directions change. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Copy, paste, edit, and since it's already grouped, it grouped it when it pasted it as well. And then edit, mirror, by a line, and I'm going to come over here, and I don't even have to drag a big line. All I have to do is left click and drag a straight line. And, you know, the more accurate I am, the better it is, but there we go. So we've gotten this done very quickly, and we just have that center guy to do now. So, you know, I just wanted to show you how quick it is to do that. So let me make the center sections very quickly. And, you know, I'm going to zoom in just so I can see a little bit better and use the magic wand again. So when I click on the magic wand and click there, you know, my tolerance comes up and I can see if it's enough. Um, or if I look at this and I think, you know, that's really more work than I want to do, just press escape and use your manual freehand tool area or freehand tool because this guy is straight across. So I'm just going to left click and left click and right click around these curves, left click at the top, right click, left click to make those curves. And then I'm going to gently curve down in here. Okay, and then I'm going to right click, left click, you know, left click at that top and right click again. And if you make a mistake, just backspace, no big deal. And, you know, either way you want to do this, you have these options. But remember, when you come down here, if you left click to start, you need to left click close to where you were and press enter. So there's my guy. I'm going to press escape. And same thing, you know, this circle's fine. I'll right click on one of the heads and just copy and paste and drag it over and then I know they're all the same size. So there we go. Now, remember if I didn't select a thing, I have to change this to complex. All right, so now we're going to start talking about how to deal with digitizing for this. And I'm going to start making some color changes. And to that, I'll just go into view outline. So, you know, here's my green pieces. You know, this is going to be the blue piece. I'm just going to come down here and say, you know what, um, make it blue. If you want to be more precise, you can um, left click on this guy and right click here, right? Or you could change the colors as you went. Um, this guy's orange. And you notice I'm not worrying about the order yet. I'm just not worrying about the order. I'm just going to get these pieces in. And this guy is supposed to be yellow, so let's just grab yellow and left click on that and right click on the color chip. And then this blue guy is supposed to be red. 
So there's red. And let's remove the color stop between the heads. Okay, so there's my red guy, and here's my gray band. And to be honest, I'm just going to go ahead and let's see if we can magic wand that gray band real quick. And that's looking pretty good, so let's say OK, change it from Auto Judge down here to Satin. Now, here is what you need to do when you digitize for a hat. The first thing is to remember you go from the center out as much as possible and from the bottom to the top. So, the first thing I'm going to look at is how do I do that with this design? And let me hide the image so I can see what's going on. And that's a decent sized design. So I'm going to pause for a second and see if you guys have any questions. Okay, Barbara's asking where the magic wand thing is. The magic wand thing is right over here above Go. And what it does is it's a color tolerance picking tool. So for example, let me turn the image back on. If I want to pick the gray line again, just get rid of that, right? I come over here to the magic wand and I click on that and what opens up is this tolerance box and it's usually about here. So I might get like one little tiny flashing thing. But if I slide that tolerance over, then I can see where the flashing line is. It, sometimes it does help to zoom in, right? And you know, if you keep going, you end up with the whole design like this. Then you've gone too far, you need to back it off. But you can see what sections it's picking and when it looks like the shape you want, just say okay. But remember, you're on auto judge, judge, so change it to a fill type. Okay, so does that answer the question on how to use the magic wand? All right, so we're good. All right, so now let's start talking about what we do here. Okay, first off, you know, we have to have underlay, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to go through all of the settings. Um, you know, it's going to depend on what you're doing. But one of the good things that you can do regarding underlay here. As you can come into your settings and if you go over to your underlay tab here, this is a zigzag. You might want to left click on that and move it over. Select the edge and move that over. Select either the zigzag or the grid and move that over. Okay? And that's going to smash the hat down to the backing a little bit better. Might be a little bit too much depending on how big it is, but you can pick the zigzag then. The other thing we're going to look at is pull compensation. This is your standard pull compensation. Let's bump that up to 0.6. And your cost compensation doesn't even apply here because there's no like other satin coming into it. So now let's just say OK. Now I want to start in the middle as much as possible and you know from the center out, right? From the center to one side and the center to the other. So in this case, I may want to try going here and here or moving this down here. And let's go ahead and hit go. And here we're going to look at how this is going to stitch. So we go, if you look next to your 3D icon, there's a stitch player icon and you click on that. And you can come over here to these green arrows and you can begin to watch how it's going to stitch. And oops, I forgot to do something, sorry. I want to move this up to the top. So what I do is I left click on it in my film strip, right click and move to the top. Okay, then I go to my stitch player. I want that to stitch first for right now. So let's go to the stitch player and click on the green arrow and let's watch that play and see how that played out. It's going from one side to the other and the only thing I don't like is that it's coming in but let's see what happens. If it goes all the way across here then we're good. If it doesn't then I need to maybe look at this. It's not that big but it could potentially be a problem, right? So. If I don't get what I want there, what I might want to try is we start here and we end here and just go back to the stitch player and hold on a second. Let me go ahead and get this reopened. And hopefully it has most of that there. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so you know I can try that. Let's go ahead and look in the stitch player and see what's going on with that, right? And I forgot it didn't move that to the top, so let's go back here and, sorry, I do apologize. If it's any consolation, the new update does not do that. So there we go, center out, center back, and I still don't like how it's stitching, but I may have to just say, okay, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, duplicate this on some level, because I made that piece. and. 
um, or I can try this. You know, there's not a lot going on here. You know, I need to connect it to the thing, but I could right click on it. If I can't get what I want, go into my settings, change it to satin, which I, you know, had done earlier, and just say, you know what, I just want an edge run, and apply it and say OK. And then move these in and out points so that, you know, your underlay is going to start here and your out points here. And then go to your stitch player and see if that gives you what you want. And it's still not doing quite what, quite what we want, but if it goes all the way across here, that's better than what it was doing. Okay, so you have to kind of look at these pieces, right? So if that's what I have to do, I have to play with this to get it to do what I want, and I have to change the underlay a little bit to get it to do what I want, then do that because it's okay if this goes from one side to the other right now. This isn't big and significant. These pieces, however, are a little more important. So on a hat, I'm going to go from the center out. Now, if this were bigger, what I might want to do is, let me hide the image here and put my hoop back on so we can see what's going on. What I might want to do is take this piece, right, and you know, look at my center point here. I could do this. Go into View Outline, right click, divide it with the line, and there's my center point. It doesn't matter if I start the line up here and come to here and hit Enter. Let's come on down into here. So what I've done is split that in half, right? These are now two pieces, right? I have a little more control doing it that way, but what I need to do if I do that is go into my view outline and edit mode, and I need to overlap these significantly, okay? So this is what we're going to have now. Let me get to 101, and I'm going to kind of close some of these down, I think. So I get to 101. Right click off to the side and generate. So now what I have are two pieces. Here's this and here's this. So what I can say is, okay, I want you to start here and I want you to end here and I want you to start here and I want you to end here. And let's look at that in the stitch viewer. And I think I moved my in and out point in the wrong place. Let me double check, sorry. No, I didn't. Well, let's go ahead and let's go here then and see if that does it. I do apologize. Sometimes it just doesn't do what you want um, because of the underlay, and that's what you have to take into consideration. So ends on the ends. You have to play with this a little bit because it's going to be different for everything that you do. So still not going to do what I want, so I'm just going to have to kind of take this, and it comes over, and there's going to be the overlap, and that's going to be the important part. This is not as desirable as I want. And if I need to, I can take the underlay out and just control it that way. Okay, and I know this probably isn't making a lot of sense, but it's vital that you go from the center out as much as possible. So I'm just going to go like this. My pull compensation gets bumped up to 0.6. My underlay, none. Apply it and say OK. So now when I come over here, I can say I want you to start here and I want you to end here, and I want you to end here, and I want you to start, because I want it to go from the center out. That is important. So let's see if we got what we wanted this time. Oh, and you have to generate to make the changes. Sorry. So let's see if we got what we wanted. There we go, center out. And sometimes you just got to bump the compensation up, and if it's not a big enough satin area, uh, you know, then, you know, use that option or manually create the underlay. If you really need underlay and you can't get what you want because of that underlay, use these tools and just manually create an underlay underneath here and control those in and out points. All right, so that's like section one from the bottom out, bottom, you know, center out is how it goes. So now we've got this piece. This piece is not big enough to worry about splitting and this piece, right? So let me zoom in on these two 
and you know so these two are going to be the pieces that I want to stitch next from the bottom up and the center out as much as possible. So once I get this done, then I'm going to select this piece, look at my fill direction, you know, make sure it's acceptable and move these so that they're very similar in the fill direction and you know just be careful you don't want everything going in the same direction but these pieces need to go. So once I check those, I'm going to check my in and out points on these. I'm going to say I want you to go in. This out point would be fine and hold on let me get this back open. I do apologize. Okay so let me hide the image again and see what we've got. Um, I'm not going to worry about this again. You guys have seen how to split that, but that's going to be on the top. Now we're dealing with these red guys. And I changed my fill direction, but I said in and out. Right click on the head, in, you know, as close to that area, and out. Okay? So we've got the red guy going next. So what I need to do is move these red sections, and I want this to stitch and then this. So I'm going to left click on this in the film strip hold my shift key and left click on that and then I'm going to press and hold my left mouse button and I'm just going to drag it up until it's right below the gray. So what I have is the gray and then the red. Okay, there's no reason not to stitch that but this is what I have to look at with these two red pieces. I'm going to click on that and I do want to zoom in on the whole design. Okay, now what I have to worry about with this is, you know, I removed my in and out points. Let me right click off to the side and go into 3D view because that one yellow guy doesn't show up. And I'm going to hit generate. Now let's zoom the whole design. And then let's zoom in around that. When I moved these in and out points, you know, the purpose was I could move this a little bit further, but it's from the bottom up. And if I need to, I can move that there as well and hit go. Center out. Okay, but this is dead center. So I need to look at these two pieces and I'm going to look at both of them. Let's click on both of them. Let's go into our stitch settings. Go over to your underlay. That's going to be a fine underlay. If you want to add an edge, just left click on that and left click and move the edge up. There's nothing wrong with that. What I need to look at is my pull compensation. Let's bump it up to about six. I don't have to worry about overlap that's for satin but I have to worry or I mean enable cross but I have to worry about overlap because if this sews funny and has a section that meets in the middle that is an overlap so I'm going to go ahead and say you know let's go ahead and change this to 0 0.7 0 0.8 and let's apply that and to see what the overlap is let me go ahead and say okay I'm going to go out of 3D and see this section right here. That's the overlap. See this double stitching right there? That's the overlap. And the reason you want that is that this is dead center. Now the other thing you can do is you can look at this and say, you know, I want the in point to be here and the out point to be here and let's go and see if you can get rid of that overlap, but you're probably not going to. Or you could say I want my, you know, out point just to be dead center or over here and you can play with these a little bit to see if you can control that. Even maybe moving them together would be fine but you've got a double kind of overlap there then, right? But what you're looking for is to get rid of that extra stitching. So here we go, we've got this as well. So if I move my out point here and hit go, then you know that overlap ends up over there but it's not in the center and it's still a better place than being dead center here. Okay, what this does is when this stitches, it's going to start here and come around and then it's going to sew funny. So let's go look in our stitch player what this does so you understand. There's my gray, I'm just going to let it go real quick. And then we're going to look at what the red and how the red is stitching and you'll understand what the overlap is. Okay, so now we're going into the red. See how it stitches and it's a complicated area. So it, it goes around and it comes down and it's stitching. And see how it's jumping here? You know, so there's going to be a little bit of an overlap there. And then it's coming across and it's sewing like this. And it's coming up and it's probably, you know, going to stop, you know, it goes up there. See how it goes up there and comes down here? Well, that's going to create your overlap. And the same thing on this red here, there's going to be a little bit of an overlap. 
and that one looked pretty good. So let's go out of our stitch player, but does the overlap make a little bit more sense now? Now, in some cases, you may need to take this section and go to your properties and change the underlay from to Tommy to grid just to stabilize that area and to get over the hump a little bit more. You might want to change your maximum step and your minimum step, you know, or I'm sorry, um, maximum step on the grid and minimum step should be fine. But you might want to make this density like 2.5 to 3.0. And, you know, go ahead and let that have a little more stability. See the stability in that stitching? It's going to hold things together better. Johnny's asking why we go from four to six. And the reason is I'm stitching on a curve. And you need to have your hat backing in there. But it kind of depends on the hat, how structured it is or not. But... I want a little bit extra because I know I've got to get over the hump, right, in most cases. So there's nothing wrong with taking that pull compensation up to 0.6. If you get up to like 1.0, you're going to have to really start looking, or like 8 or 9, you might want to start looking at what your, you know, backing is or what's going on that you have to bump the density up that high. But going from 0.4 to 0.6 is not a bad deal at all. You know, it gives you that little extra beef and it's okay, all right? So don't be afraid to do that. Um, the overlap, you know, you could do this bigger, especially if you have, you know, like a hump to get over, okay? But your bigger thing is going to be concerned about how this stitches. And if the only way to really mash down that center thing is to put a grid here, you can do that for both pieces, just select them both at the same time and pick the grid. What that's going to do is it's going to smash down. You can see that's the standard setting, but this with that 2.5 or 3.0 setting is going to smash down that hump a little bit. It's going to make almost like a little ramp for this to be able to stitch better over that hump. And then with the added pull compensation, you know, that's going to stitch a little bit better. But even just on standard, it's not a bad thing to bump that pull compensation up. All right, so here's what we've got. Now we have to decide which way are we going? And you may be asking why I didn't, since I split this originally, why I didn't just go, you know, all of this to one side and come back and do that. And you can do that too. But remember, if you split this in half and do that, let me go ahead and split this again since it kind of disappeared on us. I'm just going to split it real quick. Divide it with the line and we'll just go dead center here. If you split this, you have a couple of options, but you definitely need to make an overlap like this, and it can be that big if you need to, but you want to go at least halfway across on, you know, that hump that you have to deal with. You want to make sure, you know, and you may have to do a couple of test stitches to see how thick if that hump's too thick, right? But you want to make sure that you're accounting for the hump. There's another way to do that. You don't have to do maybe this one as extreme. You know, maybe you don't want to go that extreme, but maybe you want to go like this. And, you know, the same thing with this. Take this underneath it a little bit. Just line up in this outline view those lines, and you're going to be just fine. All right? See how my outlines are pretty lined up. All right, so here's my options. You know, just remember, you know, you might have to adjust this. This is what I usually do. If it's an auto judge, I just take it to satin. If it's in satin, I go to complex and go back to satin. All right, so I've got that lined up pretty good. Now, here's my options. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go to one. Here's my options. I have this split in half. I have all of these pieces, and I'm going to pretend that I have adjusted all of these. And I can reorder these quickly. I don't have to drag and drop them into that film strip. I just have to wonder where my in and out points are. If it starts there at the bottom, just check. Make sure these are starting bottom up, center out, right? And if you get to these points, you could actually even move those to the center, okay? We just want to make sure we push the fabric of that hat correctly. So when I want to set my stitching order, I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to go to Accessories, Set Stitching Order. And if I decided I'm going from the center this way and then the center this way, here's what I'm going to do. Just bottom up, get that center piece done, and you're going to go bottom up all the way through, 
so I've got that half defined, right? Now I'm going to come over here and say, okay, let's start here and let's go here to here and then here to here. Now personally, I would not do it that way, but you can if you really want to. All right, so I'm going to say I would not do it that way, but see how this um, changes that design over? And again, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, so it changes your design over in a way that, you know, is a better stitching thing. Now, I personally would stitch this all at one time, even if I split it and went from this side and came over, because it's at the bottom, and that you want to make sure lines up, okay? And this is going to shift. Your hat is going to shift, even if you hoop it in the best way. So, let's go and pretend that we've changed all of our things and set our stitching order, and we'll just pretend there's, you know, two pieces, and we're going to do them both here. Then I would go here, and then here and then here, and then come back and go in this direction. So you're going from the bottom up, center out. When you're done, press enter, right click off to the side, and hit go. Even if things are exactly the same color, from the center out, bottom up is the best way to go, okay? Now, most things want to add lettering to this, not just the logo. So let me go ahead and I'm just gonna throw some lettering in here. And, you know, um, I could set the size here, or I could just go like this and say go, and say, oh, you know, this needs to be this size. I'm holding the shift key so it adjusts from the center out. And if I think it's too small, I'm not going to worry. Whoops, undo. You know, I'm not going to worry about that right this second. You know, I can always drag this, hold the control key, and drag from the center out, right? And, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll go like this and, you know, make sure we get what we want and it fits in here, right? Well, that adds a new layer, but from the bottom out, center up, and I'm going to go ahead and smash this a little bit closer together. You know, I just kind of want you to get the gist, so if this is what you've added, what you're going to do is this, accessories, set my stitching order, one, two, three, four, um, as a matter of fact, I might even do it this way. You could say, okay, here, um, well, let's go ahead and keep our letters together. Um, you can do this and then, you know, do the gray, pretend there's two lines, and then come up here and do this, right? Oh, forgot. Then I need to do these letters, bottom out, center up, right? You can do it this way or... You can do it this way too. Accessories, set stitching order. One, two, three, four, five. One, you know, two, three, four, and we're doing the lettering, and then come back and do these one, two pieces here, okay? And then come up and deal with these like that. You have trimmers on your machine, so who cares? You need to go from the bottom up center out, and if that means that you do that with these different pieces in different ways, if they're not connected necessarily, it may be a good idea to do this lettering first, that keeps it in line. Do this gray thing first, that keeps it in line. You know, even if you have two pieces here, you know, this keeps these aligned, because once you get to here, you know, you're, these are bigger pieces, they're going to shift things a little tiny bit. Um, Timothy's asking if I would go orange, yellow, green, blue. You could. You could do it that way, too. Um, depends on the design and what's going to work for you. But something like this, like the lettering and this bar, they need to be stitched together. Does that make sense? Like, so center out, bottom up, center out. So you would do kids and come back and do club. Come up and do this side of the line and then come back and do this. And if you wanted to, you know what Timothy is saying is, okay, can we do this? Okay, let me, you know, uh, set my stitching order. You know, can we go and do these a different way? Yes, you can go like this. It's called balanced, right? Um, as a matter of fact, you could do this. One, two, three four, 
it takes a little bit longer make sure you get your eye right and you can do this it's called a balanced stitch so bottom up remember okay so I did that the gray piece you know if there's two pieces even you're still going to do them together and then you could come up here and do this and then say this and 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 the result would be the same type of quality but maybe even better between these yellow and orange and red pieces you might not have as big a gap here and that would work out so you can do hat stitching that way too it's called a balanced stitch there's a couple of different options you know center out and you know balanced okay and there's advantages to both ways so you have a couple of different options and you know to do this now you know I would make the lettering different of course but you have a couple of different options on how to you know make sure that this is going to stitch well and the balanced you know will make a lot of difference here but up in here it would probably make some difference right these guys would space better next to each other they would space more evenly now without that being said that implies that you have hooped your hat well that you have the right backing on it because backing is just really important on a hat but so is hooping so if you are new to hats and you're just learning this you know you need to plan on basically blowing a few hats until you get that hooping technique down just practice it and practice it and practice it um, one of the the companies that I worked for they used to make you practice hat hooping before you ever did a stitch until you were comfortable and if you've been in any of our trainings you know that they tell you to use those little clamps to hold things in place as long as it doesn't hinder the movement of the machine or hit the needle then those are good things to do the whole goal is to get that hat held as tightly as possible and make sure that your backing is in place now the other thing is let me hide my image you got to make sure that this all fits into your hoop so I'm gonna left click and drag and select everything when I'm done I'm gonna group that whole design and then I'm gonna make sure my hoop is on you know we, mine's gotten kind of turned off because I've bounced in and out and there we go and I'm gonna make sure that I have some space here and here okay you're going to align it on your sheen, but you want to make sure, you know, you're not going to try to stitch this at the very bottom brim where that edge is. you got to give yourself enough room, which means you got to make the design the right size. So, all right, so I'm going to kind of go ahead and stop here and see if you guys have any questions on that. Um, you know, it's going to take some practice, but like I said, there's two ways, you know, and there's the balanced and then there's the, you know, center out, okay? So any questions? Um, Nancy's asking what keys I use to nudge. And what I do, like when I, you know, nudge something, I use the arrow keys on my keyboard. So, you know, if I'm clicking on, on like a piece of the design or the whole design, you know, I use the arrow keys on the keyboard, okay? And let me go up here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the